What is going on, people? I am here for, if you couldn't tell by the title, another little collection update, what have you, or showing off a collection, or whatever you want to call it these days. I'm here to show off, if you couldn't tell by the title, my Vestron collection, which I'll get into. But first of all, hopefully everyone's staying safe, staying sane. Hopefully everyone's, you know, doing their thing in this time of craziness and, uh, you know, the pandemic and sickness and all this stuff going on. Hopefully everyone, you know, is staying safe. Um, like I said in other videos, I'm going to be showing off some movies that might you might not have heard of or you didn't know were out on uh, Blu-ray or whatever have you. I'm going to try to, you know, show collections or show movies that you might not have seen or heard of or known. Um, Vestron is a uh, company almost like a Scream Factory kind of deal. It's a Lionsgate, uh, like a sister company of Lionsgate. Uh, Lionsgate has A24, but then it also has Vestron, which has some of the older horror films uh, that they put out. So they have uh, the, let me get it correctly, it is the Vestron Video Collector's Series. Uh, right now they have 17 titles, which I do have. And I wanted to make this video because they uh, just said, uh, put out, that they're going to put out uh, Little Monsters, which, you know, isn't a horror movie. Um, but they're putting out Little Monsters and they're putting out Shivers. Uh, so I pre-ordered those on Amazon, which you could do that now for, I think they're like $12.99 or $14.99 or something like that. So get it now because some of these titles go between, you know, $24 and $30, depending on um, some, even a, a little bit more, depending on, uh, you know, how many discs they have. They have a few that have, like, collections on them, so they go for a little bit more. But usually, they're, like I said, they'll run you at, like, $24.99. Uh, to thirty-five ninety-nine or something like that. I think they are, but if you pre-order them now on Amazon, they're like twelve ninety-nine or fourteen ninety-nine. So do that now to uh, save yourself some money. Uh, but before I get into this whole thing, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoy this video. Uh, at the end, definitely give it a thumbs up, and of course, hit that little bell button so you know when I do upload more stuff, whether it be reviews or uh, collection unboxings or whatever, whatever have you. If you're interested in my videos and you want to see more, hit that little bell button so you know when I do upload more stuff. So anyway, like I said, there is 17 titles in this collection so far, uh, all but two. I got uh, slip covers with. I ordered a bunch from uh, Amazon and uh, eBay, uh, and two of them came without slip covers. So I'm looking for those. So uh, anybody watching this video, if they're not into slip covers or know where I can get them, let me know. But it's only two titles out of the whole thing, and I'll get to those when I get there. So uh, let me get into it. Uh, like. Uh, Screen Factory and Arrow and stuff like that. Vestron does put uh, a bunch of stuff on their um, on their features, as uh, you know, with commentary, uh, like special features, uh, commentaries, and stuff like that. So I'll get into each one. I'll talk about them a little bit. I don't want to make this video too too long, but I'll talk about each one that I've seen before. Uh, some of them I still haven't seen every single one, um, but. Some of these I've seen before. So the first one out of the whole uh, series, the whole collection, is uh, Chopping Mall. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, 80s. Um, I, let's just put it the short circuit, gone horror kind of deal. Uh, pretty much it's eight teens uh, stuck in a uh, mall at night. They decide to stay in this one store and kind of party in this mall. But in the mall, they put these new robots uh, that were supposed to, you know, keep them all safe and whatever kind of uh, cheap labor, I guess you want to call it, even though they, I'm sure they weren't cheap, but they were just supposed to, you know, if you have your ID, you could just scan it into this thing and they left you alone. Well, there was a uh, thunderstorm one night and the lightning hit this whole circuit board and it turned these robots evil and now it's these eight teens in the, um, in the mall trying to, like, save themselves. I must say this has one of the best... Uh, head explosion scenes that you see, uh, you know, 80s cheese and all that stuff for really fun stuff. Uh, this one comes with uh, audio commentaries by the uh, uh, writer and director, uh, Jim Wynorski. This one stars um, K. 
Kelly Maroney and Barbara Crampton, two of the, you know, 80s uh, screen queens. So you get both of them in here. here. Uh, you get a commentary from uh, them. Uh, you get uh, historians Nathan Thomas from Mondo Video and Ryan Tucker from Shock to You Drop. Uh, older, uh, commentaries from director Jim Marnorski and uh, Steve Mitchell, who's the uh, second director on there. And then you get a whole bunch of featurettes. Uh, back to the Mall, Chopping Mall, uh, The Killbots, Scoring Chopping Mall, uh, The Robot Speaks, The Lost Scene, Army of One, and Chopping Mall, uh, Creating the Killbot. So, a whole bunch of stuff as a, you know, with special features and stuff, but fun movie overall. Uh, this number two out of the whole thing is Blood Diner. Um, still haven't sat down to watch this one, uh, so don't know too much besides... Uh, you know, from trailers that I've seen before, pretty much just is there's a diner that's pretty much feeding people to people kind of deal. They're killing people to make their specials and stuff. Don't know much uh, other than that, um, but it seems fun. I'd probably sit down and watch this, but this is one of the newer ones I got. I got this uh, a couple days ago, so still haven't sat down and watch it, but it comes with audio commentary with director Jackie Kong, uh, featurettes uh, Queen Kong, the cook, uh, the uncle and the detective, open for business, scoring uh, the Sheetar, uh, are you what they eat, and then archival interview with the project consultant Eric Calden, uh, a theatrical trailer, TV spots, and still gallery. So that's number two out of the line. Blood gallery, uh, blood gallery, blood diner. Uh, but there's the, uh, you know, side and stuff like that. So that's number two. Uh, number three is a double feature. You get Waxwork and Waxwork 2, Lost in Time. I did own the uh, DVD of this. Kind of has the same exact uh, cover art to it. Uh, but I enjoy the first one, uh, you know, going into a wax museum and everything comes alive and stuff. Uh, there's a one cool scene with like a werewolf that I remember. The second one, not so much. It kind of went away from it. It's like having to go back in time and all this stuff. It was a little too weird for me. I enjoyed the first one. Uh, second one, not so much. Not that, you know, it's a horrible movie, but the fact that it's not really inclined with the first one didn't like it as much but the first one comes with uh audio commentary by anthony hickox and zach gilligan uh theatrical uh trailer uh still gallery and then it has a few featurettes it says the whack work chronicles there's six parts in that and then a vintage making of featurette for the first one and then the second one comes with just audio commentary by anthony hickox and zach gilligan and then theatrical trailer and a still gallery so you don't get too much as opposed for special features on the second disc, but I'm sure the six part uh, um, Waxwork Chronicles or whatever you want to call it probably kind of takes care of both. So you get uh, most of the special features on the first uh, Waxwork, but like I said, I like that one, the, the, the first one the most. Uh, the third, uh, the fourth one out of the whole thing is uh, Return of the Living Dead 3. This one kind of annoyed the crap out of me, the main character is uh you know in love with this girl i guess love does many things uh but as you can tell from the first two return of the living deads they have that like um gas or whatever that they use and it brings back the dead and stuff well let's just say uh the one kid's girlfriend meets an unfortunate death uh and he kind of brings her back to life and she's just going out there she, she's you know at this point in time in all purposes i guess you want to call it a nicer I don't even know what to call it but you can tell he's just way too deep into it he gets so many people in trouble and all this kind of annoyed the crap out of me but it is number um, four out of the whole thing uh, this one comes with audio um, audio commentary with director Brian Yuza uh, actress Melinda Clark I knew her from never really saw this one until uh, a few days ago uh, Melinda Clark uh, was in the OC um, so that was one that I was like, uh, I'll mention that again uh, later on. But uh, she's a part of the uh, commentary, special makeup artist, um, Tom Rainone, horrible with names, uh, a conversation with director Brian Yuza and screenwriter John Penny, uh, interviews with uh, special effects artist Steve Johnson and Chris Nelson, interviews with uh, David Trippett and um, Christopher Ruth or Roth, uh, theatrical trailers and still galleries. So that's number four out of the whole um, 
uh, Vestron series, The Return of the Living Dead 3. Uh, this one, uh, Chud 2. Uh, this one, after the uh, the first one with Daniel Stern and all that, this is Bud the Chud. Uh, this is, uh, what the hell is the cannibal? Um, I forget the entire, uh, does it say it here? No, but it's like, does it say it on the back here? What the hell it's actually called? Um... No, it doesn't, but it's like cannibal, humanoid, underground dweller or something like that. Uh, so the first one, you know, was um, kind of brought you into it, and then Bud the Chud is uh, one of the ones from the first one, and it's, uh, you know, it, I gotta watch it again. I haven't seen it in a long time. This, funny enough, there used to be a uh, DVD of, uh, like, unreleased movies, um, and... A lot of these Vestron titles are actually on that. This one happened to be one, Chud 2. Um, I think six out of the movies so far that are in this Vestron collection was on that, which I'll get into. Uh, but that one was one. This one I actually sat down to watch. Uh, I got four movies in the uh, in the mail um, uh, that to complete my collection. And this one I finally sat down to watch. I did. You know, wasn't really my style, I guess you want to call it. But number uh, six out of the whole thing is uh, Layer of the White Worm. A little bit too weird for me. I don't know. Uh, but this one comes with audio co commentary from director Ken Russell, uh, Lisey Russell, and a conversation with historian Matthew Malia. Uh, feature at Worm Food, the uh, effects of Layer of the White Worm. Uh, interviews with uh, Edward... Uh, or, editor Peter Davies. It's called Cutting for Ken. Uh, Mary Mary with actress Sammy Davis. Uh, and then trailers and galleries. Um, theatrical trailers, still galleries and stuff like that. So Layer of the White Worm, really when I popped it in, maybe I'll have to sit down and watch it again. Just didn't catch my fa uh, fancy. Uh, parents, haven't seen this one yet. Uh, this is one of the ones I recently got. Uh, this one comes with audio commentary with director Bob Bobalan or uh, Balaban, should I say, and producer Bonnie Paliff. Uh, isolated score scenes, audio interview with composer Jonathan Ellis, uh, featurettes Leftover uh, to Be, uh, Mother's Day, uh, Inside Out, and Vintage Tastes uh, with a whole bunch of different people in each. Uh, and then it's got a theatrical trailer, radio spots, and a uh, still gallery. I remember this, uh, the DVD of this was uh, fetching a, you know, a pretty penny and stuff. So uh, it was more out of print and stuff. But then they put this out, number seven, out of the Vestron uh, collection. Uh, this one happens to be, you know, probably it's because it's rated PG-13. Uh, and it's more, if I had to say, you know, childish. Maybe not childish, but made for kids kind of horror movie. I guess you could say this is. It's number eight out of the deal. But this is one of my favorite uh, horror movies um, when I was a kid. Uh, and that's The Gate. Uh, this is where uh, a few kids open up, you know, a portal uh, and demons come through. Uh, this one, like I said, um, also has a member of the OC in it, uh, Kelly Rowland. Uh, but. This uh, also has uh, Stefan, uh, not Stefan Dorf, what the hell's his name? Um, yeah, it's Stefan Dorf, um, who he's a young kid and his friend, like I said, open up a portal in the backyard and um, you have to have a sacrifice, which happens by mistake. And it's just one of those movies, like I said, it more, it's more, the more I watch it now, I don't get afraid like I used to. There was certain scenes back then that kind of scared the crap out of me. Now, not as much, but it is, you know, still jumpy here and there. Uh, the little minions that they have or, you know, the, the way they shot it was pretty cool, like knowing the behind the scenes and stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't seen The Gate, I'd say definitely check it out. One of my favorites. Uh, but this one comes with audio commentary with uh, Tibor Takix, uh, who's the director, writer, Michael Nacken, and spe special effects designer and uh, supervisor Randall William Cook uh, with um, a whole bunch of other talk about special features. Uh, it says isolated uh, score selections and audio interview. Um, it has a bunch of featurettes, The Gate Untold, uh, Minion Maker from Hell It Came, uh, The Workman Speaks, Made in China, or Made in Canada, should I say, um, Hell 
from hell, the creatures and demons of uh, the gate, uh, the gate's keepers, vintage featurette making of the gate, uh, teaser trailer, theatrical trailer, TV spots, storyboard gallery, behind the scenes, still gallery, and others. So the gate, that's number eight, like I said, and the spine, I don't know if you can see it, but um, yeah. So that's number eight out of the whole thing. This is the uh, Wishmaster collection, which I only seen the first one. I haven't sat down to watch all the other ones, uh, but but from what it's kind of like a Ouija board kind of deal, like uh, you know you're supposed to play this game and summon stuff, and you get the Wishmaster who will grant you your wishes, but let's just say they're not the wishes, like they don't come true as you know what they're supposed to kind of deal. Uh, but this is a four disc set, so this one's going to run you a little bit more. Uh, but it does come with Wishmaster, Wishmaster 2, The Evil Never Dies, Wishmaster 3, Beyond the Gates of Hell, and Wishmaster 4, The Prophecy Fulfilled. Uh, and each one looks like it comes with, you know, a bunch of different things. The first one comes with the most, with the audio commentaries with Robert Kurt, uh, Kurtzman, uh, Andrew D Divov, and Tammy Loren. Uh, this one also has the isolated score scenes and audio interviews with Harry Manfredi. Uh, uh, it also has featurettes, the Out of the Bottle, the Magic Words, uh, the Digin and Alexandra, Captured Visions, Wishlist, and Vintage Featurette, the Making of Wishmaster. So it must have been, you know, on the DVD and stuff. Uh, trailer spots, the storyboards, there's behind the scenes footage, there's TV radio spots, and theatrical trailers. The second one comes with just the audio commentary with Jack Shoulder, which is the director and writer, and then it comes with the trailer and still gallery. The third one actually comes with more with a featurette uh, making of The Wishmaster 3 Beyond the Gates of Hell, and then audio commentary with Chris Angel and cast members John Novak, uh, Jason Connery, and Louis. Uh, uh, Louisette uh, Geis, and then it comes with a trailer, and then the fourth one comes with audio commentaries with director Chris Angel, um, Michael Trocco, and Jason Thompson, uh, director Chris Angel, and actor John Novak, I'm guessing there's two uh, commentaries with that, and then uh, feature at Wishmaster, uh, Wishmaster Peace Theater, so I'm guessing that's like a look back at all the Wishmasters, and then the trailer, uh, so uh, yeah, the four Wishmaster movies. And that's number nine, like I said. And then it, um, the back. Uh, this one is The Unholy. Haven't sat down to watch this one yet. This is another one that just came in the mail a couple days ago. Uh, comes with, uh, like I said, it's number 10 out of the whole thing. Uh, it comes with audio commentary with director Camilio Villa. Uh, isolated scores uh, and audio interview with composer Roger Bellin. Uh, audio interview with production designer and co-writer Fernando Fonsca, Fonesca. Uh, featured isolated section of uh, his unseen score. And then you get featurettes, which is Sins of the Father with Ben Cross, Demons of the Flesh, uh, the Monsters of Unholy, and Prayer Offerings with Fernando Fonesca. Uh, and then it says the original ending. So I'm guessing they probably have a second one. It said uh, feature optional with audio commentary with uh, producer Matt uh, Hayden, uh, and then it comes with uh, theatrical trailers, TV spots, radio spots, original storyboard gallery, and still gallery. So that's the unholy. That's number 10. Uh, this one, I have not seen any of them, to tell you the truth, and it's a three-movie set, and that's the Warlock collection. Uh, so you get Warlock, you get Warlock, the Armageddon, and then Warlock, the End of Innocence. Uh, first one comes with a uh, like a really... Like if you look at the back, first one, that bottom section right there is all special features. Uh, so it comes with audio commentary with Steve Miner, uh, isolated in audio interview and score selections with uh, Jeff Bond, which is the author, uh, interviews with Satan's Son, which is uh, one with uh, actor Julian Sands, uh, The Devil's Work, uh, which is director Steve Miner, effects with um, the makeup artist Neil Martz, and Carl Fullerton, uh, behind the scenes footage, uh, interview segments with the cast and crew, vintage featurette with uh, Carl Fullerton and uh, Neil Martz, uh, vintage featurette with uh, the special effects Patrick Reed Johnson and Robert Harbos, and uh, the animation supervisor Moro Maressa and uh, Matei, uh, what the hell, and Matei artist Robert. Uh, 
Skiffo, hopefully I said that right, uh, theatrical trailer, video trailer, TV spots, and still gallery, that's a whole bunch. Uh, the second one comes with uh, audio commentary with uh, Anthony Hickox, vintage making uh, the featurette, behind the scenes footage, extended vintage interview segments with uh, Julian Sands, uh, director Anthony Hickox, and actress Paula Mil uh, Marshall, uh, theatrical trailer, TV spots, and still galleries. Uh, and then the last one is uh, Warlock 3, and then it's uh, behind-the-scenes footage, vintage interview segments with the cast and crew ta uh, trailer, and video sales promo and still gallery. So that's the three Warlock movies. That's number 11 out of the um, this series. Uh, this one I had like three different... T actually, probably... A couple more times than that but it's slaughter high it's number 12 out of the whole series uh pretty much it's a um a kid that got bullied in high school and at one point in time the um the what do you want to call it the uh students kind of made fun of him and they were in science class and at one point in time and they mixed this uh fluid up i guess you want to call it or they mixed stuff up in, in chemistry and it blew up and pretty much disfigured this kid and many years down the line he invited all the classmates back to um uh the school for this like party and they're thinking oh you know he's gonna uh you know forgive us or whatever and let's just say kind of doesn't uh you know cheesy old school uh horror movie with you know Blood, Guts, and Gore. Really fun movie, I must say. And like I said, I own this thing. Uh, on like all the old school, like, um, what do you want to call it? Uh, Walmart box sets or the ones that came with a few different movies. This one came out in a few times. So uh, adding it to the Vestron collection on Blu-ray. I want to see the transfer. I haven't sat down to watch uh, the transfer of it, but I've seen the movie plenty of times. Uh, this one comes with audio commentary with co-writers uh, George Dugdale and Peter Litton. Audio interview with the composer uh, Harry Manfredi, featuring isolated music and special effects sounds. It has featurettes going to play uh, to pieces uh, with Mike Urza. Uh, made Days of Doddsville with actress Caroline Monroe. It has an alternate title sequence. So I'm guessing like a um, different beginning. Uh, theatrical trailer, radio spots, and still gallery. So that, like I said, number 12 out of the whole thing. Slaughter High. This one haven't seen. Gothic. This is number 13. I uh, never even heard of this one beforehand, to tell you the truth. The other ones I've heard of, this one I've, I've never heard of. Uh, this one comes with audio commentary with uh, Lisey Russell and uh, conversation with film historian Matthew Melia. Uh, isolated screen uh, score se uh, selections and audio interview with composer Thomas Dolby. Uh, featurettes, uh, The Soul of Shelley with actor uh, Julian Sands. Uh, Fear Itself with screenwriter Stephen, uh, Stephen Volk. Uh, One Rainy Night with director of photography Mike Southern. As theatrical trailers, TV spots, and still galleries. Gothic, don't remember this one. Uh, like I said, never even heard of it beforehand. This is one of the ones that I don't have a slipcover for. Uh, so if anybody knows where to get it, uh, kind of, you know, kind of upset about it. This is one, like I said, was on that eight movie set. So I do have seen it already. This is, you know, 1999. Uh, they said all the students are going to be in gangs and all this stuff. So pretty much what they do is they make these uh, cyborg teachers kind of deal and to go and combat all these gangs and all this uh, you know, craziness that's going on. Um, you know, it's one of those, it's not really, I wouldn't call it a horror movie per se. It's more of a, I'd say like an action movie, like Terminator meets um, some kind of high school type movie kind of deal. Um, but uh, yeah, it's the class of 1999. This one comes with audio commentary with uh, producer and director Mark L. Lester interviews uh, school safety with producer Mark L. Lester and co-producer Eugene Mazzola. Uh, new rules with screenwriter C. Courtney Joyner. Uh, cyber, te or cyber teachers from hell, the special effects creator uh, Eric Allard and Rick Stratton. Uh, feature of discipline, the director of... Uh, Photography, Mark Irvin. Then you have uh, 
theatrical trailer, TV spots, still galleries, and video promo. So, like I said, class of 1999. If anybody knows where to get the uh, slipcover for this, just this, because they have whole, like, lots and stuff. I'm not going to spend that much money. But uh, class of 1999, this is number 14 out of the series. Uh, number 15 is Beyond Reanimator. This is after everything. Bride of Reanimator, the Reanimator and stuff. Haven't sat down and watched this one yet. Uh, this is, I believe, the third out of the whole series. Could be wrong. Uh, but this one comes with um, audio commentary with director Brian Yun, uh, uh, Yuzna. Isolated score selections and audio interview with uh, Xavier Kaplis, who is the composer. Uh, Beyond and Back. Uh, an interview with Dr. Uh, director Brian Yuza, uh, Death Row Sideshow, uh, and interview with uh, Jeffrey Combs, uh, Six Shots by Midnight, an interview with uh, S.T. Joshi, the author of I Am Providence and The Life and Times of H.P. Lovecraft, uh, production art gallery illustrated by Richard Rappaporst, uh, uh, still gallery, vintage EPK featurette, uh, Doctor Reanimator, Move Your Dead Bones music video, and theatrical trailer. So like I said, still haven't sat down to watch this. This is number 15 out of the whole thing. Uh, number 16 out of it is Dagon, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's Dagon. It's a uh, like monster type deal where a couple go to this island and there's a whole like mythos and stuff. Uh, you know, I uh, haven't seen this one in a long time. I gotta sit down and kind of rewatch it, see how the um, the transfer and stuff is. This is one that I wanted on DVD for a while and just never got. And then I saw it was on, uh, you know, here, so I picked it up. Uh, this one comes with audio commentary with Stuart Gordon and screenwriter Dennis Paoli. Uh, audio commentary with director uh, Stuart Gordon and star Urza Godin, uh, Godin. Uh, interviews. Uh, one is called God and Monsters uh, with um, Stuart Gordon and filmmaker Mick Garris. Uh, Shadows over in Boca, which is producer Brian y uh, Yunza. Uh, Fish Stories, which is an interview with S.T. Joshi, the author of uh, I Am Providence, The Life and Time of H.P. Lovecraft. Um, the Vintage EPK featurette and archival interviews with Stuart Gordon, Urza Gooden, and other cast and crew. Uh, conceptual Art Gallery, which is uh, from Richard Rappaporst. Uh, storyboard Gallery, Still Gallery, and uh, Theatrical Trailer. So that's Diagon. And then the last one, number 17, which is the last one in the series so far, besides for uh, Little Monsters and Shivers coming out. Uh, this is uh, Maximum Overdrive. Again, one of the only two that I don't have a slipcover for, which I'm looking for. Uh, for those of you who don't know what this one, Emilio Estevez is in it. Uh, pretty much a... Um, a comet or whatever kind of screws up all the um, cars and anything that's electric and kind of brings them to life and they start killing people, whether it's cars and trucks or like uh, lawnmowers and uh, uh, soda machines and stuff like that. One of my favorite movies of all time. This was another one. The DVD was, you know, a little pricey to get, uh, but now, you know, they have it on, um, have it on Blu-ray. So like I said, this and Class of 1999 are the two that I'm looking for slipcovers for. Uh, so you get uh, audio commentary with Tony, uh, what is this, Magenstrail, uh, author of Hollywood Stephen King. Uh, audio commentary uh, with actor and comedian jo Jonah Ray from uh, and Blumhouse feature exclusive Ryan Turek interviews. Uh, which is one is Truck Stop Tales uh, interview with uh, Martha D. Laurentis, uh, Rage Against the Machines interview with uh, actress uh, Laura Harrington, Honeymoon of Horrors interview with uh, John Short and actress Yardley Smith. Uh, for, you know her as, uh, uh, what do you want to call it, Lisa Simpson. Uh, Maximum Carnage interview with makeup artist creator Dean uh, Gates, uh, a kid and king. Uh, King's Court, an interview with actor uh, Holter Graham. Uh, the Willington Factor, a look back at the filming of Maximum Overdrives with member of the production crew. Uh, Who Made Who, the interview with uh, Murray Englehart, uh, co-author of ACDC, Maximum Rock and Roll. And then Goblin Resurrectus, the res uh, restoration of Happy Toys Goblin. So that's the uh, 
the big truck that you uh, you know see the main villain I guess you would want to call it in the whole thing then you get behind the scenes footage still gallery theatrical trailer and TV spots so those are the 17 titles that are right now in the vintage in the uh, Vestron let me get it right again it is the uh, uh, Vestron video collector series you know same should be easy to say, but Vestron Video Collectors Series, 17 of them. Uh, like I said, the Little Monsters and Shivers are coming out, which be uh, 18 and 19. Um, so still looking for those two slip covers, so if you know where to get them. Uh, if you enjoyed this, like I said, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, if you made it this far, hit that thumbs up. And of course, hit that little bell button so you know when I do upload uh, more videos such as this. Uh, probably sooner or later, I'll do another uh, Screen Factory um, you know, overview of my entire collection because it's getting bigger by pretty much the week. I got a few more titles, 13 Ghosts and uh, Graveyard Shift, the ones that came out. Uh, last week or this Tuesday should I say um, so yeah I got a you know co collection breakdown if you want a long video of all my movies uh, let me know in the comments because that'll probably be like probably close to an hour and a half to two hour type deal because I got a lot of horror movies uh, or if you just want it broken down by you know company or collection or whatever you want to call it like Scream Factory Vestron or whatever have you so hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, yeah I guess until next time I will see you guys.